Okay. Hi. All right. Uh, this is uh, September 1st, 2017. And uh, my name is Joseph M. Stern, or Joe Stern, as I prefer. Uh, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, on July 11th, 1942. Okay. And you, your current position with the Oh, Prince yeah, I'm, I'm uh, a longtime member of the Prince of Wales Social Aid and Pleasure Club, and I'm currently president. And how many years have you been with the club? Is that long time member? Do you know? Do you remember uh, how many years? Yeah, uh, uh, twenty-nine. All right. Although several years I was out of town, two years and and two years other years I didn't parade. Uh huh. But I've always I've been a member since nineteen eighty-eight. All right. Um, and can you tell me the story of just of joining the organization? Sure. <coughs> uh. After uh, I moved to New Orleans about 1980, in 1980, about 1983, I moved into a neighborhood that's known in that neighborhood as the 12th Ward, which is a neighborhood that runs between Jeff, uh, Louisiana and Napoleon, uh, Chapatulis, to mostly to Magazine, even though like the neighborhood, the original 12th Ward actually goes, of course, all the way to Broad, where all those wards meet up. Uh, and then I started meeting a lot of the people who lived in the neighborhood and made some friends and ha was hanging out uh, in a couple of bar rooms and in I, and this is how I know the date and you can check it might be a year off for all I know but uh, Owen Hain who was from the 12th Ward was elected King of Zulu so he <coughs> wanted the Prince of Wales to parade in the Zulu parade like because that's his roots and that's where he came from so the, so at that time the club had been inactive I think for probably since the mid 80s so it's like three or four years maybe even six years I know uh, that famous movie uh, movie by Les Blanc always for player there's an interview with uh, two people who were in the Prince of Wales mm -hmm. And what year is that movie? That movie is 77, 78, okay. maybe. Okay. So I they think. were active in the late they 70s? Were act yeah, they were active up until, I know, 79, 80. Okay. Okay. And then they became inactive for a few years. Okay. I don't know how many. But they were going to organize and get back together. And uh, a few months before, I had never been to a second line before. And a few months before, uh, a, a longtime member uh, who had once been uh, Grand Marshal of the club had been murdered, mm -hmm. and they had a and he was like somebody who was close to uh, people who family I'm close to. He was part of that family, so I uh, so they had a second line for him, and I went out there and I did, and I, I, I it was a totally life changing experience. I guess you could say it was like. And this was back in the time when you could just throw a second line for somebody, all you needed was a band. Right. You didn't need police, and you didn't need this, and you didn't need all of that. Right. This was like 84, 85. No, this must have been 87, whatever. Uh, so when the, uh, the club started getting back together, I knew a lot of the, most of the people who, would get, who were in it. They were, you know, not most, but a number of them, because they all hung out in... Uh, this bar room called Morris's, which is now a, uh, what do you call them, condos, <laughs> on the oh, corner right. of Chabatulis and General Taylor. But at one time it was a, it was a bar room and it had a few uh, rooms for rent upstairs, okay. in the kitchen, and uh, it was run by a man named Morris. <coughs> it was called Iglodonia's actually for years and years. And a big mistake that the Prince of Mayo's made was not buying that building when we had a chance. Because they'd have sold it to us, because they had a long time been out in that neighborhood and knew a lot of the people. Right. And somebody actually advised, say, you guys need to maybe not parade one year and buy this place. Use your money, do you do that? Right. <clears throat> well, we could have probably done both, actually. Yeah. So, anyhow, when they said uh, the club is going to get back together to parade, in the Zulu parade with Owen. Uh, so they started, you know, getting together. And I said, well, hey, can I, can I join? And they said, sure. 
so I joined. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I did. And like, <clears throat> so what happened was we parade. It was, it was the year uh, that it was brutally cold mm. for Mardi Gras. It probably didn't get, a, I know it didn't get above 40. I mean, because we paraded in tuxedos and then everybody bought long johns <clears throat> and drank plenty of wine. Mm -hmm. But it was still really cold. And we really kind of stole the parade because we were out there having, and we had a band and we were doing it right and everybody else was, it was so cold. Do you at all remember who the band was? Mm, honestly, no. Yeah. Honestly, no. <clears throat> but everybody had such a good time, they decided that they might as well keep the club going because they had like there were about 25, 20, 25 people do it. Wow. Okay. So they kept the club going and we, we had a parade in August. We used to parade in August. <coughs> uh, August 12th is really our anniversary. Oh really? Yeah. And when did it change to October? Well it changed to, first it changed to the second, it was in August and everybody said, oh man, August is too hot. So we changed to the second Sunday, we were second Sunday in August, we changed the second Sunday in September. This was before the young men had their their uh, anniversary parade, that uh -huh. two hour parade that they have. So that Sunday was open. Oh, the YMO. The YMO. Uh-huh. <coughs> and then, it wasn't that, it wasn't that strict. There weren't that many clubs parading at, at that time. Right. For the next, three or four years later, it had blown up and lots and lots of clubs were parading. Yeah. But at that time, there were, there were open dates, so it wasn't that, it wasn't that hard. Right. So, uh, <coughs> We paraded then for a while, and then somehow, we then we were parading another time, and we got bumped because of the young men. There was a there was a hurricane threat, so they had to postpone theirs, and they and then they let them bump us. They we, you can't do that kind of thing anymore. But they they did that, and then somehow I don't know. A few years later, we ended up because that's an anniversary date for us too. So we ended up on the second. Sunday in October, mm -hmm. and that's been our date since uh, the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and then, um, when, at what point did you become president? Oh, that was, I, uh, <coughs> so anyhow, the club stayed together, and then the next year we paraded in Zulu again. Mm -hmm. That was a whole story in itself, mm -hmm. but, uh, <coughs> Because when we got there, they invited us to parade, and when we got there, they didn't have a band for us, and then they wanted us to parade with a high school band. I mean, this is like six o'clock in the morning. We had rented tuxedos for this and everything, so we said, you know, no, 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 uh-uh. Uh, and and then a, you know, one of the guys, like the big shot, or or one of the officers, the governor, I can't remember who, he would say, well, you know, if you want to do this, you know, you got to put up something. And, and so I replied to him that you ask us, you know, we didn't ask you to be in this, you ask us. We have our own parade, we don't need to be in this. So we can go home. <laughs> you know, it's still seven o'clock Mardi Gras day. Yeah. So they, they let us parade with another club that had a band. So, <clears throat> but we haven't been invited back since. <laughs> But I mean, no, I, you know, I, I love everybody. I'm cool with everybody. But that was just... So then, uh, <clears throat> the man who was president was a man named uh, Jimmy Parker, who was president for years and years and years. Like, he Instead was... Instead of Prince of Wales. Yeah, he had been a Prince of Wales from a little boy. And uh, he had been president for a long, long time. And then he, uh, since he found out I had a, was a college teacher, he made me financial secretary. <laughs> so I was financial secretary for years and years. Financial se in our club, financial secretary counts the money, and then the treasurer takes care of the money. Okay. See, so you have checks, checks and balances. I see. I see. That's so I was, I was uh, financial secretary up until Katrina. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then after Katrina, uh, I came back, there was about five of us, 
that came back that were in town. So we actually had the first real second line after Katrina. And we had it in December, I think it was December 19th. By the time we got it organized, there was like uh, Junior, Wilder, Alvin, me, little bro, and my granddaughter. This one. <coughs> uh, might have been somebody else. Oh, and Stanley Gordon was supposed to do it, but he was having, he had health problems just before the parade and he couldn't parade. So we had that parade, uh, and then so, and then some more people came back, and we we were trying to we were keeping the club together. And I had written a grant to get us a new banner, because we had lost our banner in, a, in Katrina. So they just they made me president, yeah. and then f for a, a year or two, and then another uh, Alvin Alvin Epps, he had been vice president. So I backed off and said, you know, Alvin should be president because he was vice president. So he became vice president for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I got elected president again. And I've been president since. He was president about five years. And then I got elected president uh, three years ago. Oh. <laughs> three, four years, three years, uh -huh. I think, yeah. And I didn't ask before what brought you to New Orleans uh, initially. Oh, I actually came down here because I was working with, with uh, per everybody knows Malcolm Suber. Uh-huh. He was one of the uh, leaders in the Take Him Down right. movement. Yeah. Well, I came down here to work politically with him and an organization, another, an organization that we were both in. Uh, what, was, what was that organization? It was a, a communist organization. Uh-huh, uh -huh. <laughs> A yeah. Marxist uh -huh. Leninist organization. Yeah. And then, um, and then, well, I'll ask about, I'll ask about this. Yeah, yeah. No so that's why I came down here. Okay, okay. Um, and so the Prince of Wales was founded in 1928, as far as I'm not mistaken, right? Exactly. Coming up on your, will that be 90, anniversary? Yeah, right. our, our 90th is going to be the same year the city celebrates the 300th. So you can let the city know we're coming for, and the Jazz and Heritage Foundation, we're coming for some money. Because <laughs> we want to throw down. <laughs> you should. <laughs> you should get it. <coughs> um, and so uh, I wanted to ask about the, the story of the name. You know, I've, I've heard and read that there maybe are at least two origin stories of the name. I wonder if there's an official one. No, there's no official one. Uh -huh. And I, you know, I'm as... I told myself I could have done something about that in a way because even in the late in the middle 90s one of the original members was still alive wow. he, he was a reverend and he had a church where we we one of the things that we do is we go to church before we parade mm -hmm. uh, some a lot of clubs do that I guess but we do uh, and he had a church up uh, in the 13th Ward on Sonia, I think it was. And we, would, we went to his church. And nobody thought to really ask him. You know, I mean, yeah. the name was a name. And a, so anyhow, the story, I, see, I, one of them is just something that I did just as a history love person. But the, the man, you know, uh, who, Henry, Harry Wallet, whatever his name he married that, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, you know, <clears throat> they were bon vivants and party people, and I just figured maybe he came down here or something like that in the 20s, uh -huh. and that they named it after him because he was partying. And then one of the other members was talking to a, a man who, I don't know if he was a, a, was a Prince of Wales or he had been around, but he was a longshoreman. Uh, <clears throat> and he was talking to him, and he said that if you look on a, on a, a bottle of... Uh, it's a JMB, it's a, a scotch. JMB, Cuddy Sark, no, it wasn't JMB. What's another, I don't remember. Uh, no, I'm not a scotch drinker. I'm not a scotch, no, nobody's a scotch drinker anymore. But yeah. back then they drank scotch. And whatever it is down at the bottom, it says blah, 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 Prince of Wales. Uh, uh -huh. and, and this older man, this man, I don't even know who it was, but the, the member told me that the man, and he was like, at the time when he told, 
told that this man was in his 80s, right, oh, okay. or 70s, 80s, okay. and he was an lo old longshoreman, and he said it was from being on the bottle of scotch where it says Prince of Wales. Okay. So those are the two, and I don't know. Did you ever find any confirmation of the Prince of Wales? You know, I wanted, you know, I want, <coughs> it would take, you'd have to go back and look at the the paper, the newspapers from the 20s. Right, right, right Look right. at the newspaper 20s from the 20s and see if, uh, yeah. and I don't know if that stuff's all, if it was computerized, it wouldn't be that hard. Some of it is. Some but I don't think that back far back. So you'd have yeah. to go and look through the papers and see if he came down here. And, right, right, right. You know, but he did come to the United States and he did party around. So I'm sure if he came to the United States and partied around, this, is, good. this is where he would come. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <coughs> and so, and how many members do you all have now? Currently, uh -huh. we have nine, I think. And the, does that include the Lady Whales? Or is that no, separate? no, the Lady Whales are, are separate this year. When did the Lady Whales come about? I think they were two separate times. Uh -huh. I think uh, in the 70s, even. That that I'm not exactly sure of, but sure. there was a time, in the in the could have been the '60s or '70s. At some point, mm -hmm. okay, there was a Lady Wales. Mm -hmm. it, it was more like an auxiliary. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as as much. And then the the newer Lady Wales started in '95. Yeah. Okay. And then, but they've been inactive. We tried right after Katrina. Uh, the men and women prayed it together because there were only a few women <coughs> and that worked for a couple of years and then it it wasn't working that great better to be well i with the people who were involved at that particular point yeah it, yeah. it wasn't working so yeah. Yeah. so then for a while there wasn't any lady whales oh, okay. and one of the women who's now president of the lady whales central whose family's been in the club for years and years. Her uncles, when I joined the club, two of her uncles were in the club. So her family's been associated. Mm -hmm. She paraded with us. Mm -hmm. right. We let her parade with us. Okay. Um, I wondered, it sounds like the, when you were, uh, when you joined the club, when it was reorganizing in the late 80s, was specifically for or geared toward um, the objective of parading Zulu first of all, you know, and then we just it was originally they got they got together they tried to get together it was originally supposed to be just the one time to do the Zulu, uh -huh. and then everybody had such a good time and said you know we should just keep this going again. Yeah, yeah. It was like I guess I'm not that much of a student of it, but I would I guess sometimes you know the culture thrives and then it dies down and thrives. Some of that has to do with economic conditions. Mm -hmm. I know like in, the, it, in uh, like when I moved to New Orleans in 1980, I couldn't find a place to live in New Orleans. I had to move to, I was living in Harvey because there were no affordable places, you know, in neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And then after the oil bust, so I think, <clears throat> you know, maybe coming out of the oil bust, and people started working back again in, in situations I guess the economy had gotten a little better or whatever. Right. So it was not, it was not, didn't cost crazy money to parade back then. Yeah, yeah. You know. And in those, in those early years, what I'm wondering is that when the, you know, some of the clubs, especially ones that were formed in the early 20th century, in the 20s, like when the, you know, the original Prince of Wales would have been formed, there's some clubs where it seems like explicitly parading was a big part of it, but sometimes not at all, right? Like just getting together as a social club doing right. other things. The, yeah. There are social there's a social club, social aid and club and club, there are all kinds of different clubs. Right. There are right. travel clubs, there are mm -hmm. saints clubs mm -hmm. and there's then there's social clubs that they may hold dances and stuff like that and raise money and then at the end of the year they split the money up. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there are all kinds of different clubs in New, in New Orleans. Some of them parade, some of them don't. Right. In fact, probably there are way more clubs that don't parade than right. do. Yeah, and it seems like that's probably always been true. Um, probably. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, New Orleans, you know, it's just it's just in the nature of working class people to organize and form mm -hmm. form their own organizations to meet some of their own needs. Yeah. I mean, that was the origin of reason that social aid and pleasure clubs got together yeah, yeah. to help each other out as well as just in New Orleans they also had a parade right, right. <laughs> exactly you know it's yeah so it's also <coughs> part of the culture here and lots of right because because music was yeah yeah well I yeah and so one of the things that I'm I'm really interested in and um, in general kind of being a student of the history of this stuff is you know this name social aid and pleasure club maybe especially today outside of new orleans you know people might look twice if, if you say that like what what is that oh, okay. you know what does that do and that word pleasure you know how that has um been a really motivating force along with social aid you know mm -hmm. this idea of pleasure and providing for you know doing whatever it is charity or mutual aid or benevolence that that is not separate from right. pleasure necessarily right. right you know that's like a very um you know like kind of a very natural idea here where it, it might not be other places necessarily but i'm just wondering about True like in the, uh, you well, know well i have like uh i went and found a copy of our original filing with the secretary of state or whoever you file that with and it explains the thing. A social means that you s you, or you do activities together, like parties, dances, and things like that. You aid, you help each other, mm -hmm. and then you you know pleasure yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 In fact, uh, like I said, when Jimmy was president, right? This was in the early '90s before he retired and stuff like that. Sometimes we would have meetings. For years, we, we, when we moved from Moore's, we moved a block up to the rock bottom. And, and we'd been in there for a long time. And then we would have a meeting. And then we would vote that the club votes to entertain itself, which means we would go to the bar, next door to the bar room and the club would buy the club members a drink. <laughs> that was an official motion? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because we were using club money. I mean, if people uh -huh. wanted to go, and then we would... And, and, you know, that's how we would meet. We always used to meet for years. We met next door to the rock bottom because mm -hmm. it was originally like a, a three-plex. And then two of the apartments got converted into the bar room. But one of them was still like a two-bedroom, a one, two-room and a kitchen and a bathroom. Uh -huh. So we used to meet in there, you know, yeah. and then we would go next door. Mm -hmm. Have a drink and hang out. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'm curious too about. Um, I had mentioned this before we turned the camera on too that I know you have other roles in, in the city and the things you're doing as an educator, right? As right. Activist, long time activist, it turns out. Right. That an organizer. Um, oh, I knew yeah. now, but I didn't know that that was like the origin. So, you know, oh, coming yeah. to the city. No, yeah. um, and I just wonder if you talk a little bit about the overlaps or connections or synergies you've seen between um, your participation mm -hmm. and leadership in the social and pleasure club community mm -hmm. and that, that other um, activity. Unfortunately, not as much as I would like. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a, a 60s person, so I've been active since I was, like, in college, mm -hmm. uh, politically active. So that's the reason I originally came down here. And then when I started getting involved in the culture, uh, at a time, this was, there was not a whole lot going on politically. Okay, I was with an organization called the Liberation League with, uh, under the leadership of Malcolm Suber mm -hmm. and Leon Waters. And the thing, we, we did a lot of organizing around police murders. Yeah. Because the police were much more violent and brutal, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. to African Americans, mm -hmm. but to working class people in general back then. And mm -hmm. I'm talking about the 80s. Yeah. And then right. especially when the cocaine thing, it was really crazy. Right. And then and then they were involved in uh, the original, m not the original, the second move to change all the school names. That was Malcolm and Leon mm -hmm. and, our, and the organization we were yeah. in. And that was in the early, in the late 80s and early 90s when they were changing all the names. 
and I still remember that it was fine with everybody. They didn't mind changing all the McDonald's. And they did, but when they decided they were going to change in uh, Washington, <laughs> people really got very upset. Yeah, because what were some of the, the previous names of the school? Well, a lot of them were the McDonald's. Then, of course, you had Beauregard, which mm -hmm. became, uh, see, I just forgotten. We were just talking about this. Beauregard became, uh, what's his name? Frederick Douglass? Douglass? No, that uh, Nichols became Douglas. Beauregard okay. became uh, what's his name? Is the Supreme Court Justice? Um, I don't know. I don't know which one it is. Uh, and I was just talking about it in my class today. Oh, or right. Wednesday, it'll come, Wednesday, yeah. Come to you. It probably will. In a few sentences or something. Right. Yeah. But in Beauregard, uh -huh. and uh, but a lot of the McDonough schools got changed because uh -huh. there was McDonough six, seven, eight, nine all those numbers. Right. And a lot of those got changed. Mm -hmm. uh, those, those are a lot of the main ones. And then when Washington, but people got much more upset. But they ended up changing it anyhow because the city was the school board passed a law. This is one of the main reasons, one of the, the most important and worst things that happened after Katrina was dismantling the public schools and destroying the teachers union and the other unions, the, the cafeteria and clerical custodial union. They all had a union too. I don't know if it was the same, but they had unions too. Mm -hmm. Which was the mainstay of the black middle class in New Orleans. You know, and they just crushed that and wouldn't give the teachers their jobs back when they started opening up the schools. So uh I can't remember what I was saying. But anyhow, they changed Washington to Drew. Mm -hmm. but, oh, yeah, so what, this, what the, the law, the rule was that uh, it was a, the teachers, the parents, is the principal, and the students. If they got together and wanted to change the name of the school, they could. Which is what, you know. Right. So they did. They were changing all kinds of names. But when they came to Washington, they made them upset. Mm. Okay. So when I, it, actually when I started getting more active in the social and pleasure club thing, there wasn't a whole lot of political activity going on. Mm -hmm. In fact, there hasn't been a whole lot of political activity until the last few years yeah. with uh, Dylan, what's his name, Dylan, uh, the man who murdered those people, at Oof. Dylan Roof. Mm -hmm. right. And the election of Trump and New Orleans is a hard, hard place to get people motivated politically, partially because they can always go out and, and the frustration and the rage and all that that builds up over the week from being exploited and being misused and having to endure all the bullshit. <laughs> you can go out at the second line and, you know, drink a few beers and smoke a joint and dance for four hours and see all these people that you see every Sunday and right. yeah. on the other hand I think the second line like they used to like they do in South Africa if you've ever seen some of those demonstrations from South Africa before the overthrow of apartheid mm -hmm. when they would use musicians and parades and marches like that it's a powerful powerful force in fact we've been lucky in a few of the parades we've been uh, having a few of the demonstrations we've been having lately we've got a couple of bands that come out and play for us yeah and it really i think the, i think the january 20th we had a couple of bands yeah i was talking to quest more <coughs> about that just last night so oh okay and um yeah he said that one of the um one of the demonstrations i don't know which one but that there was a brass band there and his his description of it was that you know there were um you know, and I don't know if it was around one of the memorials specifically, but that there were people there who were, um, you know, white supremacists or, you know, folks who were in favor of defending the monument. Oh, that's when they took down Beauregard, Beauregard. I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he said that the, the band sort of 
like they didn't know what to do with it you know in terms of like that kind of energy in the space that yeah they just ca the, yeah i remember that because i was there you know those things took an incredibly long time to do yeah i mean it was just so we were out there for i was out there for davis and i had tired of waiting and i yeah. left but i was out there for for beauregard and i was not going to leave i said okay i'm going to stay and then I don't know what time it was. It must have been two o'clock when I got done with their gig. It was the truth, the man, the truth. Ah, uh, uh huh. Okay. They just came out of nowhere up Esplanade, man. <laughs> oh boy, the spirit picked up. They just started. Wow. They just, that was great. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, But whenever, whenever we can get bands to play for us, because it's a real, it's a real, you know, it gives a whole rhythm and motion and, and, uh, enthusiasm and spirit to, to your demonstration yeah you're marching down the street and you to that music yeah yeah um i was telling him i don't know if you've heard uh in the last i don't know i guess year or so whatever it was that um alan toussaint passed away and i think that kind of coincided with the city council ruling about taking down the robert ely statue but I don't remember exactly, I know it was after Tucson's passing, but mm -hmm. anyway, the TBC had been, uh, the one of the band leaders, Juicy, had started putting this um, like improvised riff in one of their songs, which was, we're going to name Lee Circle after Alan Tucson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He still does it. I just heard them on Wednesday. He still does it. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, I wonder... Uh, yeah, it's interesting to think about this this idea of sort of pleasure or the release, you know, of being something that can be, I don't know, kind of productive to political action or that kind of like political involvement. But it can be. It can be. Right. right. But also can be. It's just a question of of making the the club members and the people who are involved in the culture. I think part of it, if they really understood the origins of the culture and the significance of the culture and you know that it's, at certain times the social is more important than the pleasure right. you know and that certain things need to happen certain things need to change and you know but that's you know that's part of the yeah you know I, I mean I've brought issues up to people and I hand out flyers and encourage people to come to demonstrations and I call I text a bunch of people come on down we're taking down Robert E. Lee so, I mean, people know that, that I do that stuff, and then, sure. you know, they see me on TV, and <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> so, uh, I want just to switch gears a little bit. Um, 12 minutes left in my battery. One of the things, so I'm, you know, I'm a dance, I'm a dancer, and uh -huh. a dance historians kind of my uh, my interest and my love it's how I came to second line it was just oh, okay. as a dancer who moved here and you know discovered oh, okay. this and why yeah. did you move away <laughs> I know that's a life that's with cameras off life <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I Brits of Wales also you know is known as a um, a club of very good dancers you know people who really bring a lot of energy and put work and commitment to that you know and uh, I so I was just wondering like you know what's 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 behind that like do you is this something that you consider when bringing new members in are there like times you get together and dance it's kind of like what's the uh, I don't know what's the role of dance in your um, life together as a club besides just on parade day oh uh no, I, we don't really, you know, people, you know, people get in the club, usually somebody knows them or a couple of people know them, you know, and sometimes they, you know, have been in the culture for a long time. So, you know, they've been following, you know, since they were three years old or something like that, their mother's paraded or, so they already know how to dance. Yeah. Uh, we go to parties together, we go to dances together. But I don't. I don't think we concentrate a whole lot on on dance. Yeah. There's, you know, there are some clubs that try to work out sort of routines and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll walk together for a while. Yeah. Every time we try that, it just 
<laughs> but you have tried it. Uh, once or twice, I think maybe it's sort of like herding cats. Uh huh. You know? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, that's what it's. What what it is is. It you just do what you feel. So yeah. it's really hard to do anything in ensemble form. Yeah. I mean, you might do something. You might do something like, say, you're coming down the street and all of a sudden you turn on the Claiborne or something, then everybody may get in line mm -hmm. and do something, maybe cross or something like that for a minute or two. Mm -hmm. But nobody's going to keep that up for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you? Are you? Do you like to dance? Is this yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I love to dance. That's one of the things that really, I've always liked to dance. So it's one of the things that really encouraged me to get into it at first, to start going to second lines. Once I started going, I go. Yeah. I mean, for years I didn't miss a second line. <laughs> you know, start to finish. Right, right. And like you said, yeah, right in there in the late 80s, it's right when they really started like picking up again, more clubs forming. Right. <coughs> um, and it, it was really... It was kind of a mixed situ it was kind of a mixed strange situation because at the same time when the clubs were really thriving and we had a good time back then. I mean, clubs supported each other so that you might go to three dances on a weekend. Right? You might go to a dance Friday night, you might go to a dance Saturday night, and then you might go to an early dance Sunday, like at six to ten. Mm -hmm. You know? And people we you know, you would go to dances like the West Bank Steppers would have dances, uh, over at the uh VFW Hall over there, and uh, it had tables with all the clubs, you know, maybe 8, 10, 12 clubs, wow. 15 clubs sometimes, you know, and wow. the clubs would really, really support each other, yeah. you know, and uh, we had a lot of fun. And that's not something you see? It wasn't, much. yeah, it didn't, cost a, it didn't cost a whole lot of money to parade then because the police didn't charge that much, right. for one. And uh, we never spent tons of money on clothes. Then one of the, that was the other thing that happened. Some of these younger guys and some of the clubs, it was cocaine money, mm -hmm. right? And that's when a, a lot of them, they started buying these thousand dollar shoes and, and it's the game really. And then plumes, like for example, well, plumes were for Indians. I, we had uh, our president Lonzo before he died in 2002 he was president when uh, Mr. Jimmy Jimmy Parker stopped being president mm -hmm. he became president and he was you know uh, he was I guess old school whatever you, whatever you want to call it but his attitude was that plumes were for Indians feathers were for Indians and second liners had umbrellas yeah. And well, baskets sometimes. But we, we used to, uh, we were really kind of known for f years for our umbrellas. Yeah. That we put a lot of money into. It spent a lot, a lot of ribbon. Mm -hmm. You know. And I don't know if I don't know if you've ever seen any of the old the oh, umbrellas yeah. that we've done. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, they that's were actually one of the one of the questions I had on here was about the, the oh. story of the umbrellas being, you know, the signature <coughs> signature piece. No, that we did. Yeah. yeah, we just started getting. You know, we just started doing it. We started decorating. Mm -hmm. People like Lonzo Alvin was made used to make these incredible umbrellas. Lonzo, I mean, Lonzo used to actually even sew his. Really? Oh yeah, he used to sew the bows on. Huh? Wow. Wow. <laughs> so we, you know, so and and it wasn't really until he died, and after that, after Katrina, really. But no, just be right when he died, maybe just before Katrina, but mentally, that we really started getting into, and and uh, the price has gone crazy. For the feathers. For the feathers. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me that it had something to do with. You know, they used to they used to buy them, and 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 somehow the Chinese cornered the market on them, so that Chinese bought because the Chinese have done a lot of investing in Africa. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay economic investment uh -huh. as opposed to the US who's doing a lot of military investment right. but this is a story I heard I don't even know if it's true right. but that they somehow had cornered the market on these feathers so you had to go through them but all of a sudden the price went up like about 100 150 bucks a pound 
So if you're buying, like, I mean, it got crazy. If you got, and, and we had, this is like at a time when we had the men and women together, and we had like 12, 14 people and kids. Yeah. So we were buying three pounds of feathers. So if you're spending like $750, and then the next thing you know, you're spending another 600 bucks. That's a lot of money. Wow. And when did this happen? When did the This happen? happened in uh, 2008, nine. Okay. And then that's, that's also like, you know, the only place to get them was Jefferson Variety, and then mm -hmm. people started buying them themselves online, mm -hmm. which is what people have, are, are doing for a lot of stuff, ribbon, yeah. velvet, because yeah. everything has gone crazy high. Right. So in order to at least try to save some money. Right. But that's when uh, Shaka Zulu started. Now he's got his own shop, and he gets feathers, and people go through him, mm -hmm. and he gives a pretty good price. Mm -hmm. But still, they're three hundred seventy-five dollars a pound. So, you know, even if you got eight, ten people and you only want one fan and a couple of kids, you're still going to need a pound and a half. You're still going to need five hundred bucks for the, that's yeah. just for the feathers. Yeah. Then you can ribbon, velvet, somebody to make them if you don't make your own. Yeah. So. Monk Boudreau used to make some of your. your Monk, streamers, Monk right? used to make all our stuff. Yeah. Right. Does he, does he still? He, no, he, he doesn't. Noki made our uh, yokes last year. Uh -huh. <clears throat> they didn't, they stopped wanting to, Monk was giving us a deal too. Monk's a good friend of mine. I'm a skeleton man with Monk. Oh, you are? Yeah. Huh. I mask, I mask every uh, Mardi Gras with Monk. Uh -huh. Monk's a really good friend of mine. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's why he was giving us a deal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, it just got really, really expensive. And then uh, a couple of our guys decided they wanted to try making them. And they actually made some that were okay. They weren't as good as Monk's, right? Yeah. I mean, Monk makes the, Monk, Monk Kevin Dunn, make, about the people who make the best stuff. Kevin's incredible, his stuff is really good. Yeah. I'm sorry that they stopped parading because they used to do some really great original stuff. And who was Kevin with? He was with the original four. Oh, the original four, yeah. Yeah, I remember one year they came out with the briefcases and the... <laughs> I mean, they used to do really <laughs> cool stuff. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, like and, they re and he was really good and they'd spent... You know, anybody else who wanted to do the same stuff would have... And people did have Kevin do their stuff and he was really... It's way more expensive than Monk. Yeah, yeah. He was really expensive. Yeah. Monk was expensive, but Monk only does... He does the young man, he did us, he does uh, Pal and them, West Bank Steppers. Uh -huh. And then I guess he does one or two other other clubs, if he feels like doing it. Right. But he doesn't do anything around Mardi Gras or anything right, like right. that. Right, of course, he's busy selling his own seed. Yeah, well, he's selling it all his grandchildren. Yeah. <coughs> um, I, have, I have one more thing I wanted to ask you about, but I have one minute left on okay. my battery. I wonder if there's a place I could plug this in. Yeah, there's a, Is right there a plug right over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to hear a little more, maybe, or just a reflection on that that first second line after Katrina. Um, oh. And I don't know, just memories of that. It's I wasn't there. It sounds like it was really powerful. This is not the right plug. Um, <laughs> It sounds like it was really powerful. And, and of course there was, just kind of in terms also of what we were talking about with um, organizing and you know all of the changes that were happening in the city post Katrina and the need to, to bring people together. Sure. And also to um, sure. stand up to the powers that be <laughs> and all of the in all of the policies and economic decisions that were being right. made behind closed doors at the time. Right, let me run the bathroom real yeah. quick. Um, how, how old? Then? Uh, oh, okay. Is that a little while ago? Yeah, then, uh, uh, I think they were nine and eight, maybe. Eight. 
do you have um, several members of your family who are involved with the club? My grandchildren. Your grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. My youngest daughter paraded one, one, or two, one year, I think. Uh -huh. Does this sound right? Let's see. Can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you. It's All right. The little, the little <coughs> bars are going, so yeah, we got you. Okay. okay. You took a pic that picture of that? Um, I put the camera up towards it, so oh. it's on the video. Yeah. Oh. Let's see I, I, got a, I, I got one of my granddaughter from the same year. Your grandson and your nephew? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and uh, that's yeah. my granddaughter. Yeah. She's in that one too. In the orange? In the red and yellow, yeah. That's her right there. Yeah. She paraded after Katrina too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was so proud of that girl. Uh, how old was she then? How old was she then? Nine. What's her name? Megan. <clears throat> but she was living in Georgia. She just, it was because it was so close to Christmas. There was on Christmas break. Uh -huh. And she was staying on the North Shore with uh, her great uncle's, at that time, wife, I guess you would call her. <laughs> and, uh, what is it? She, yeah. She was even late. I was so upset to the parade. We started at Tipitina's, right. and then we went to the rock bottom. So she didn't show up until the rock bottom. Mad, because she wasn't in some of the first pictures. So yeah, okay, so okay. in addition to that, <laughs> okay. what, do you, what do you remember from that day? What was it like? You know, I, it, it's funny. I don't remember whole lots about the day. I could talk about organizing it and all of that. Yeah. I, and I remember a few things like, <clears throat> so anyhow, I, uh, because I, I was working for the state at the time, I was a Medicaid and an analyst, okay? Mm -hmm. So because of that, I didn't want to leave the state because they were paying me and if I had to report to work, I didn't want any problems. So they paid us, you know, we just got, kept getting paid. Yeah. So I was really, I was really lucky uh, I had, my evacuation was crazy, you know, I left with a friend of mine in my daughter's car uh, because she went to Atlanta with her sister and the kids, which was basically my granddaughter and my grandson, mm -hmm. okay, and <clears throat> I had her car and they were in Atlanta, so I evacuated a friend of mine and we went to this motel. Uh, you know, it took a long, long time to get out of town, so we finally found a motel uh, just out, out of Jackson, I think, north, uh, north of Canton. Uh-huh. Okay. And it was the last room in the motel, and it was, so the guy let us have the room, and then we wanted to stay there the next day, but I guess he thought because there was only, he said, there's only one bed in the motel, we said, and the room, we don't care. You know, we had nowhere else to go, it was blah, 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 we were driving for nine hours we gone 200 miles. So, but the next day he wouldn't, he wouldn't let us have the room because I guess he thought because we slept in one bed, he was Indian, uh -huh. you know. So, so I don't know what his problem. So anyhow, yeah. yeah, so we were going, originally we were trying to go, I don't know where the hell we were going, we were just going, okay. So I have a, a good friend of mine who was a member of the club for a long, long time. Joe Williams and uh, was a long time member. Alvin Epps was his nephew. They were from Lexington, Mississippi, which is uh, probably 45 minutes from Canton. You go north on uh, 55 a little and then you take this road. So we went over there and we, we were in a house the, the next night the hurricane hit up there. It was really bad up there. I mean, it was 60, 70 mile an hour winds, rain, you know, we were in, really, we were in the country in Mississippi. So then uh, the house was about 25 people in a two bedroom house. Just people sleeping, trying to sleep everywhere. But it was, you know, it was what it was. Yeah. It was better than being where we were, we thought. So 
then the next day we went and found a motel in a city called Rains, Louisiana. And my friend needed to go to Detroit. So a couple of days later, we run out of money for the motel room and we needed to do something. We hung out. So I took him to Monroe and he caught a plane to Detroit because, and somebody had called me Helen Regis, who's a, you know her? Mm -hmm. She's a sociology professor at LSU, LSU. who's done, who's written uh, academic papers on social aid and pleasure clubs and second lines and parades and things like that. Yeah. She called and, and told me, I guess it was somebody who called me, I guess it was her, either her or Michelle Longinou. Okay. She called and told me they've got a place for me to stay in Baton Rouge. So I went from where I was to Baton Rouge, it was kind of kicked because I went through uh, where, where, what's his name, grew up, it's that town where, uh, what's his name, the piano guy, little, uh, and, which one, <laughs> <laughs> which one, yeah, the one who's, there's a, there's a minister, and, and they're all cousins, Oh, what's his name? He was from the 50s. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry Lee Lewis, and I can't remember his, his perverted minister cousin. Okay. And then the guy who owned the cowboy club out in uh, Gilly. They were all cousins. Okay, okay. So I went to Baton Rouge. I stayed in Baton Rouge and then ended up going to Cal Oakland. California to take my daughter a car because she was going to school in LA at the time. Okay. So I drove out there, picked her up, we went to LA, then I flew back and stayed in Baton Rouge and they found me a place to stay with this with a professor, a philosophy professor at LSU and then I finally had to go back to work because they had set up Medicaid in Baton Rouge but I, I, I hated Baton Rouge and I just wanted to come back to New Orleans. I used to come to New Orleans every weekend when I could. And so finally I came back here at the end of November. And, was it the end of November? Must have been earlier than that. End of October. I don't know. Uh, anyhow, given, given everything that had gone on, I was very concerned and also given that the political thing that was going on, we could hear, you know, the, the obvious racism and, and everything that was going on and the destruction of black communities and uh, why should we rebuild and I was actually really concerned that if the culture didn't start back, I knew the Indians were going to be Indians, you know, they were going to come out regardless because mm -hmm. Monk was already sown, right? And he was back. Everybody, you know, people came back as soon as they could, a lot of people, right? So I was actually concerned that if, you know, we didn't parade, if the culture didn't start back up, then they would use that as an excuse. If we didn't do it right away, then they use it as an excuse to stop it or to change it. I mean, for years there have been rumors about Oh, they only want to have like four parades a year, six parades a year, and they'll have like five or six clubs parade together and blah, blah, blah. And, it, you know, given the fact that uh, the whole thing with, uh, what's his name, Montana, with mm -hmm. the Indians, mm -hmm. right, Tootie. Mm -hmm. Who was testifying in... Right, I was, I, I was there, because yeah. I had gone with Monk. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. And that was just a few months before Katrina. It was a right? few and months he, before Katrina. He passed away right there on the right. like in this the is, pulpit basically. Yeah, this has got stage. to stop and he fell over there. It was yeah. something. Right. And that was in June or July of two thousand five. I think, yeah. yeah. But I was there with I was there with Monk. Monk uh -huh. doesn't drive, so uh -huh. sometimes I would take him give him rides to places. I wanted to go anyhow. So. Right, right. So you know, I was concerned. And uh there just happened to be uh, five of my guys here, Alvin was working uh, 
picking up old refrigerators, working for somebody throwing trash. Uh, I can't remember what Walter was doing. Walter had a job somewhere doing something. Uh, Junior was here and little bruh, Sydney, who does, uh, who at that time did renovations and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, come on man, we got to do this. We need, you know, we need to, I said, let's do it because unlike most places, our route basically was, a lot of it was still okay. Yeah, a lot of that area didn't a, flood. Didn't flood. Mm -hmm. And even parts that did didn't flood as bad as some parts of the city. Sure. And people were like, for example, Purple Rain was already open. Uh-huh. Right. Was and the rock bottom open yet? Oh yeah, the rock bottom was definitely open. Yeah. <laughs> Stanley Gordon, who was, was going to parade, was the Prince of Wales, was going to parade with us. Uh-huh. He was, uh, he was running it. Uh-huh. And uh, I can't remember his name, but he was, he was head of, he was really good chef, he was a chef. He wasn't, had uh, a truck outside. Uh, oh yeah, the rock bottom was open, Purple Rain was open, and Second and Dryas was open. Those three bar rooms. Because okay. I spent a lot of time in them. Everybody did. Yeah. I mean, it was the only place you could go to see people. Right, right. And Purple Rain people is would downtown, go, right? On, uh, Purple Rain is on Washington and uh, Saratoga. Yeah, right. And that had been a place where we had stopped. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, people, I wasn't. I mean, people were drinking too, but people go to, to bar rooms just to see who was around. I mean, that's where people go to see, yeah. find people, and yeah. find out who's alive and who's dead and where people are, and you know. So uh, those were open. So it was basically our route was open, and then and then, so I said, "Come on, let's do this," and, and because we had, if you remember, when the hurricane was right. We were good. We had already had all our clothes and everything. We didn't have them, but they were. We, we had bought them at. I can't remember the the name was. It wasn't Stepan. Might have been Stepan style. It was, they, but they were up on uh, Chef, that little strip mall on Chef where the Walmart is. Uh -huh. and our clothes were there, but we also had money with Meyer for hats. Oh sure, right. right? Fresh so the clothes were gone, but we had mo money with Meyer. So I said, well, look, this is what we can do. Clothes were gone because that flooded. Because they got, yeah, the yeah. place was gone. Right, I mean, right. Buildings were practically gone, if I yeah. remember correctly. So I said, look, this is what we can do. Because people were working, people had money, you know. So I said, look, this is what we can do. We'll rent tuxedos. First, we tried to find clothes. We couldn't find any clothes. I yeah. said, well, rent tuxedos. We went to Myers and I said, look, we got this money. I said, find us, so we rented, and we wanted to use our colors, so royal blue and white. So we rented tuxedos, and Meyer got his hats, and then my daughter was living in Atlanta, my granddaughter's mother, they were living in Atlanta, and she found these cheap, <laughs> these $30 shoe, royal blue shoes, in a shoe store in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and bought them for us and sent them to us. And, we didn't, and then Monk made us corsage, and that was Where it. Where did you rent the tuxedos? Uh, Metairie. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Metairie wasn't, you know, Metairie was Metairie. Metairie was right. up and around. Right. Okay. So then uh, we went and, and put in an application in the date, and we also got, somebody had told me that uh, Black Men of Labor had that weird parade they did for Spike Lee. Oh, okay. That, for the that they, was, for they the pretended like it was the second line. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay. Somebody told me Punta Mayo had given them money. A thousand dollars. The record company. Yeah. Okay. So I I wrote them, and uh, I said, uh, "Look, we're trying to do this," and they gave us they gave us a thousand dollars. And between that and I can't remember where it was, and then so we hired Rebirth, and I said, "Look, this is what we've got." And we're hustling. If we can hustle more, we'll pay you more. So we did. We actually, I think they said they'd do it for fifteen hundred, and and we actually ended up giving them eighteen. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, so which wasn't, you know, but we were in. So you know, some of the things I, re, you know, so about the parade itself. But I was just, I really thought it was a very, really important thing to do. Maybe I was just maybe overreacting. I'm not sure. But. <laughs> 
now, now, given, I mean, given what we know now, <laughs> it was wise to not underestimate. Right, right. right. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, like Pence, our vice president, was one of the people who said, why do you want to rebuild the yeah. swamp? Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they're going to want to rebuild Houston. Floods even more than we do. Right, which, yeah, which we Somebody doing. told me they had just started, there was a second line in Houston. Somebody had organized a club and there was a parade in Houston. Really? I just heard that the other, before this storm, somebody was telling me. Wow. I said, wow, that's wild, that's great. Before, oh, not, not, in, not in reaction no, to what's happening. No, before. It was that they had organized a yeah. club and they were parading. I've heard that of people maybe who went there I don't know after who. Katrina or... I'm sure it was people who moved there after Katrina. I don't yeah. know who it was. I, I just had heard about it. I said, yeah. oh, that's really great. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. I mean, you got to live in Texas. <laughs> I know I spent 21 months in Oakland in the, uh, 2001 and two, and every Sunday I was, I was like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what am I going to do? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So anyhow, we had the parade. I, I mean, I really don't remember a whole lot about it. I remember people coming up to me for months afterwards thanking me. You know, and people telling me when the band started playing, they started crying. You know, that it was really very emotional. You know, yeah. I remember, you know, certain places, you know, in some places where there was still trash in the streets and everything like that. Oh, and then I should, yeah. You know, and and as, as far as like the route together, so we're going to start at Tips, and we're going to go to the rock bottom. And then our route has traditionally been down, going down Louisiana. We would stop at the, uh, what's that bar oh, uh, See what happens when you get old and you have too much information <laughs> in the, your uh, head. Right, is it the, the two-story purple one uh, on Louisiana? Yeah, what, what is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, and I can't remember because I don't live here full time anymore. So now places in my head. Are <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows where I'm talking about yeah, the candlelight. Right. Yeah. The, no, that's not the candlelight. No, that's downtown. Um, no, whatever. Ah, shoot. It's the best bar room in town. Uh, right. It's where all the school teachers used to go. It's where everybody goes when everything else closes down. Uh, and stays all night. Because it's open later. Right. Yeah. yeah. But we used to stop there, and then we used to stop at Kemp's. Okay. Okay. So that was gone. And uh, oh, and so, but the but uh, Purple Rain was open, right. so we had stopped there before, and then as, as a man called Charlie Wright, okay, he'd grown up in the Twelfth Ward. He had never been a Prince of Wales, but he'd been friends, and and, and we had stopped. He lived on sec on Third and Dryas, mm -hmm. and we stopped there every year. Okay, because he had been friends with, uh, he was an older man, uh, and he had been friends with Jimmy and Parker and some of the older guys in the club. So he gave us that stop at, at his house. Uh -huh. And I was driving by and I saw him in the yard. He said, Charlie, you're back. He said, yeah. I said, you know, we're having a parade. He said, oh, you got to stop here. So, so then you had another stop. So we had another stop, uh -huh. and that was enough stops. How did you advertise it? I mean, did you do rap sheets? Boy, I don't remember. Yeah. I'd have to check. Yeah. Who would I have given them to? I was giving them, sometimes I gave them to uh, Ronald Lewis. Uh -huh. I gave them to a couple of people to say, you know, if you want to save these. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, 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 right. I don't know if we did a route sheet or not. Huh. Word got out. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Word I mean, got out. The way you describe it, I mean, it really, it sounds, I mean, you're describing community organizing, you know, yeah. what you were doing. Right. And you knew that it was going to be really important and um, for people's spirits, you know. It really was. I mean, people for, I'm talking literally for months, people would come up to me, man, thank you. I said, I did, you know, I did it for me. I needed it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, a lot of people said, you know, if this culture hadn't started back up, they wouldn't have come back. Mm -hmm, yeah. 
That's why they came back, because they couldn't live without the culture. Yeah. <coughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I got here, the first time I came here was in 2007. Oh, and okay. And I still heard people talking about it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Well, good. Yeah. We paraded the next year, too. Yeah. But, yes. That's when we were, I think we did the, that, was that. that was that. Yeah. I think, yeah. That's. That's really an excellent, that's an excellent uh, ensemble there. Oh, yeah, that's, that stuff was... That's really amazing. It, the Indians call that bananas on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that was a great, that was good, too. Um, one clarification of detail um, that I just want to circle back to is when you said you... Um, had the, uh, I guess, the charter or the incorpor the papers of incorporation, yeah. right? Uh -huh. when, when did that happen? Incorporating with the state, you said? Yeah. Okay. Did you all do that, like, in 88 when the club No, we went? didn't do that. They yeah. did it in 28, 8, 29. Oh, really? oh it's an That was from, like, the original. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you still have that. I, yeah, well, I, I got a, I don't have an original, but I got a copy okay. from the, uh, I remember I went to the Superdome, not the Superdome, the Convention Center. They were doing something in the Convention Center with that kind of thing. And I went down there and they, they found it. It's, it's they were doing something at the Convention Center? Where they were at, the, something for the city was at, the, the records oh. department for the okay. city oh, was I at, okay. or the st whatever it was. Okay. I, okay. I remember having to go to the Convention Center to do it, I to see. get the documents. Wow. Yeah. So I, I uh, made copies. I've given a lot of copies to members. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would love to see, you can just look at the wording on it if you have it around. Sometime. I do. I'm really curious about I can show it. I can show it to you. I'll give you a copy. Sweet. Okay. If I have more than one. Great. Um, <coughs> this is I really appreciate the conversation and your time. Oh. Is there anything else you wanted to add before I turn the camera on? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay.